Hello friends, today I want to show you this very simple DAP. As you can see here, we have only one input field, which is an input field for a token address. And then we have a button to get the USD price of that token that is represented by that token address. We are going to get a couple of tokens here and we are going to get their price. So let's get the Uniswap token address. And let's get it from here. And here we have it. We paste the address here and get the USD price. And this is the current price of the Uniswap token. We compare with the price that it's showing in Etherscan. And we see that it matches 18.54. What other one do you like? How about Chainlink? Let's copy paste the address of Chainlink. We paste it over here. And we get it. It's quite similar to the price of Uniswap actually. Let's get another one that you might want to check it out. How about SushiSwap? Let's check it out. That one is a little bit cheaper right now. Let's copy the address. We paste the address here. And we get the price here. So you might be wondering how do we get these prices? And the answer is the entire logic for this simple app is less than 50 lines of code. And that's thanks to Morales API for prices of tokens. So let's go to Morales. And I want to show you what I did to get this app up and going. So let's get to login. And then here we are going to check in Web3 API that we have the following APIs here. And we're going to go to token and we have this one token address price. So here, as you can see, if I do try it out, then I can get the price of any token here doing something very similar to what I did in my own front end. But how do you implement this in your own front end? And this is the main beef of this video. So we already saw the DAP. Let's go to our code. What we have is a very simple Flask app. The structure of any Flask app is usually as follows. You have your app logic here. You usually have an external module that starts your app. And this one will start the app folder. And the app is usually in a folder like this that you initiate with an init.py. And in that init.py, you import your views. In the views, what you do is just load your template. Here, I just have one template, which is my index template, index.html. So index.html is here, and it just has the bottoms that we checked already. So we have a an input field for the token address and we have this get price button and we have this input field here to show us the result this one is disabled by default because people is not going to input data there now that we have that we go to the logic and the logic is very simple and this is the part that i want you to notice we could from our own front end make the call directly to the morales api with the proper headers to authenticate and we will get our result we will be able to post that in the input window that we just saw but the problem with that is if we do it that way our authorization key would have to go in the headers of our request and that's not usually something that you want to have in the code that is going to be served by the browser to the user because that's visible and then the user can just get your api key and use it to use morales on your behalf which is something that you don't want so usually a best uh, practice for this is to wrap that external authorization on your server side and then expose something that is a little bit more tailored to your purposes in the 
actual UI. So here what I have is a very simple request where I wrap the ERC20 token address that I'm receiving from the front end and I'm using it to call my own separate API, not the Morales API, but what I have in my API is just a wrapper. This is just to allow only this type of request to be made by a front end and then that will limit the possibility that someone uses your keys for that. So to get actually the logic of this, we are going to go to our views file. And this is something that you can do in different modules, but that's something that I just did here in my views file. And I created this route, which receives a post method. In best practice, this should be a get method because I'm just wrapping the Morales API, but I want to get things going faster. So I use the post because that one allow me to send a JSON body to this request. There is a way to do it to, with the get method and leave me a message in the comments if you want me to show you how to do that. So we got this post request that is made to this specific endpoint on my own app. And that one is calling this function. And this function is doing all the wrapping of my call to Morales. So I set here, what is the URL in Morales that I want to query with the variables of the address, which is the token address that is coming from the front end, the chain and the chain name, which is something that I'm just setting up here, hard coded. And this, if I want to check another network, then I will change these two values. And then the values of the headers, which is my authorization key. You have the advantage that you can use environment variables with lot.m. I have this API key already as an environment variable. I'm not even showing that one to you. When I call here in the UI, in the front end, what I call is my own server to this route that I define here, that is called request price that receives this post request. I send this request body that I just created here, getting the value of the token address. And I send that request to my own function, which is in this route. When I get a response to 100, that means that that's correct. And I proceed to populate the data, which I just get the JSON response that I'm providing to myself through that wrapper. The element U as the price is the one that I want to put here in my input field that I use to display the result. If I get something different than 200, that means that there was an error. And then I will have to console log that error here. I want to highlight that I didn't do a lot of error managing in this app because it's just a sample. I'm just doing it assuming that I make a right call to the right URL in Morales, assuming that the layout of this URL will never change, and assuming that Morales will always be online. So guys, that's the way that you build this DAP. And with that said, let's check it again, flask run. Right now, you know what was going on behind the scenes. So we have it here and I can just paste my Uniswap token address here and get it back. And here I'm going from this front end to my own wrapper in the back end to Morales and back. And here it is. So guys, remember that all the code for this project is available in the GitHub repository in the description of this video. And remember to like this video and subscribe to the Morales channel. If you have any questions regarding how to use Morales in the best way, join our Discord. If you have any question about this tutorial specifically, leave us a comment in the video and I will try to get there as soon as I can. So guys, thank you very much. This is Daniel. See you in the next video.